Hi guys, this is Elizabeth Quam with Engedi Grove and I am Homesteading for Health. We are Homesteading for Health and I wanted to talk about in this, um, in this video, I wanted to talk about, well, first of all, you'll always hear me talk about fat soluble vitamins getting up in your body, iodine and boron, boron. Um, I want to talk about kind of some of the healing that I've gone through and I'm going to keep it into one section. This isn't the only thing that has healed on me, but it is one thing, uh, one uh, area to keep it concise and condensed that has healed on me physically for myself. There are lots of different people that have had um, arthritis and other pain in their body go away through the supplementation of iodine and boron and um, some people that supplement with boron don't supplement with iodine. Some people that have iodine supplementation don't know about boron, vice versa. Iodine and boron, it's like they got married in my body is what I would like to say. Like I really believe those things work together and they just really mm, get some good healing done. Okay, so one of the biggest things I'll start with the back pain. Okay, so I had pain that would, was going down my back and especially lower back pain. And um, a lot of lower back pain can be, um, they could say, oh, it's because of hydration because hydration is really important for that lower back. Um, also, K2 is really wonderful. K2 is when your fat soluble vitamins and I might just say that iodine and boron, they happen to be fat soluble vitamins as well, but they don't accumulate the way that the other, those other vitamins could accumulate in your body. Um, it would take, it, boron might, it says it doesn't accumulate, but I don't know, maybe it does a little bit, but whatever, I am moving on from there. Not enough of that bunny trail. So, um, my back pain. Now it would, it was lower back pain and then it kind of started traveling up and then it was like mid back pain and lower back pain. And then like if I was sleeping and hunched over like this or hunched, I would be, I could feel it stretch and feel like kind of achy. And that was like that way for nine years, nine years. So sometimes I'd have pings of pain in my lower back that would be uncomfortable, but like all like it would always be kind of sore behind my behind my chest and then always have this stiffness in my back. So like if I laid down in a certain position and, and got up, that's like, oh, like, oh, so stiff, like sometimes like in a position for a little while that I'm like, oh, can you help me out of bed kind of stiffness and um, and then. I had, uh, and this is all to do with like your, um, well, nerves, but like your, all that ligament tissue. When you butcher an animal, like as I, I have, and I'm not, a, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not a surgeon running around these bodies, but that, that um, tendon, those tendons, those state, uh, uh, what's it called? That fascia, uh, the, uh, tissue that isn't muscle it's like connective tissue in your body that goes all the way up your spine and down and all that stuff I believe that stuff was just getting um, infected with mold because I believe that we're basically all of us are dealing with mold toxicity and mold colonization in our body you don't have to swallow that pill not necessary you don't have to think that that's true um, but you can be helped with the iodine and boron because they are very good for that connective tissue, all the <coughs> ligaments and everything and bones and, um, oh, your bones. Okay, so that back pain that I had is absolutely gone now. I was supplementing with high dose iodine, higher dose iodine for um, from like late, late April or beginning of May until November is when I stopped supplementing high dose, except for I took 100 milligrams today because I really enjoy it, um, and I felt like I wanted to boost. But I don't want. I did. I stopped supplementing in November, mid-November, because I had a, a toxic reaction in my face right here that looked exactly like detoxing 
or to- intoxication from breast implants. So I've healed so much my back. And then one place that I want to talk about that's confusing, I'll, I'll tell you in a minute, but my toxic face rash was is because basically, okay, well, well, did boron and iodine do it or did my breast implants do it? I believe if I didn't have my breast implants inside of me, I would have just been healing more things on my body, but it decided to like work on taking these toxic things out of me. And I can't wait to see if there's mold in one of them, but I don't believe that Either way, I don't know if there's mold in one of my implants that I got when I was like 22, but it doesn't matter. And I don't believe that the mold was probably in there to begin with. I believe my body probably would have colonized the implant itself with mold. Okay, moving on. I'm going to talk about, so I've got the back pain gone, absolutely gone. And it's, it's a euphoric feeling. When you go from not feeling that pain to, when you go from feeling pain pain in your back to not, and I'm like waking up in the morning because, oh man, God, did I pray in Jesus' name for my back all the time. When I, and then with the iodine and boron still praying for my back and now completely pain-free. That, that boron helps you. It's also loves water. So boron helps you absorb more water into your tissues, actually use your water correctly in your body. You know, I was drinking a bunch of water and peeing it all out. How is it going to hydrate your body when you're peeing out all your water? No, it won't. Boron helps you get water into your cells and actually helps you use your water appropriately in your body. It is wonderful. Okay, so moving on. (sighs) Okay, so that was nine years of kind of, it wasn't all the same back pain. It was just kind of like, sometimes it was like worse pain than other times. And then sometimes pings of pain and sometimes like stiffness and lots of stiffness. And then always, if I hunched over my back, always I would feel stiffness. Always whether I was working it out or not, like it doesn't matter. Like just like if I laid down in bed and grabbed my knees like this, I would feel stiffness in the curve and I don't have that anymore. I don't have it anymore. Um, uh, Okay, so praise Jesus, I love it. All right, so this is the other one that's hard to explain, okay? So I've explained it to doctors, but they don't understand what it would be. Um, If you are a doctor and you're listening to this, which would be strange because you're so busy doing other things, um, because um, so there was a there was a spot underneath my rib cage, like right here. It was underneath my ribs and it was like a growth because it was um, whenever I would like get my knee like this, I wouldn't be able to do this, like crunch up my knee. I wouldn't be able to go like this or like reach down like this. No, or do a crunch without some weird thing popping up and coming over my rib cage. And so that's on the right side of my body. It's all the right side of my body. So on the right side of my body, it would do that. And um, that was happening probably for seven years. And uh, it happened, it, it didn't happen all at once. It was like kind of slowly come on and then sometimes it would do it and sometimes, and then the frequency of it doing it came, became so much though I could do it on demand. I could do a crunch and then it would, on the right side, it would pop up over and I'd have to push it down into place. Tell me what that is. I have no idea what that was. Um, it, the, the best that I can think of is like it was some kind of connective tissue cartilage feeling thing that, would, that was a growth. So common with mold is growths. Growths and deformations of body tissues that are your own. Your own body tissues deforming. Growths. Um, yeah, anyway. So all on the right side of my body. So that, and then um, there, uh, my hip pops 
on this side and it's uncomfortable and it pops on this side and it was the same hip that I had um, pain in at night especially like turning like shifting and turning like that bone and that hip was weak and and it was weak it weakening getting worse it was getting worse and when I started supplementing with iodine it was helpful but like when I supplemented with boron oh man it worked oh it that bone I I know my bone started getting more dense like it's supposed to your bones should be nice and strong and dense and but flexible so you you could take I won't get into medications that make your bones dense but not flexible and then you get fractures and then just as many fractures I won't go into those medications don't like boron is wonderfully beautiful for your bones to make them strong to make them flexible to make them not break easily if you're breaking bones easily boron is so helpful with bone spurs as well growths bone spurs are growths that boron helps to prevent and helps to heal yes if you have a bone spur you don't have to go to a doctor to to heal from that you can actually wait and let it heal itself with boron but you don't have to wait I mean I would just judge what what's going on in your body because um, surgery is kind of a nice thing if it's something that they can just shave off and then moving on and then then get your nutrients so um, so it's weird because so this this side of my body all the way from my eyeball doing this red thing and that's all of these nerves there's so many nerve connections in your eye that go to so many places in your body when you look at a an eyeball and you see all these nerves like those are important to pay attention to it's just interesting how your body does things um, and is made so and then all the way down and then into my hip and that still my hip still pops and my eye still does the red thing those are two things that I want to see healed and my my ligaments there's a ligament in my knee about right here that when I do crisscross applesauce, it kind of pops a little bit sometimes. I last couple days I haven't felt it do that, which is interesting. But sometimes I go a couple days without feeling something, and then it was it's like back again. But um, with other things that I've done, but uh, I'll keep you updated on that because I I would really like to see that change that heal. And but one interesting thing is that I had foot fungus foot fungus on two of my toes just two of my toes my big toe and my toe my other little toe next to it and I had foot fungus there foot fungus is an internal issue it's something that's happening internal to you when one mold loves you other molds are attracted to you too like it is trying to decompose you it's lowering your immune system it's making you weak it's weakening your bones um anyhow and i just think we're all filled with mold toxins because it can cause every disease and i feel like it's the big backgrounder it's the bully at the bar that's like pushing everyone um, pushing everyone's buttons to make them get kicked out but it's kind of like staying in your body saying i like this place this body doesn't know I'm here. It's just kind of walking around doing its thing and I'm going to I'm going to decompose this body. Anyway, you don't have to believe that. Anyway, iodine and boron, fat soluble vitamins. Okay. So, moving on. The foot fungus. I I decided, you know, I know that iodine can help heal foot fungus naturally on placing it on the outside of the body, but I said to myself, I want to experiment because I'm an experimenter. I thought, I wonder if just ingesting it, I wonder how long it would take for my body to properly fight off the foot fungus. And I, I'm going to have to check back on my text, but it's been about two months now, two months, like two months ago, I think it was that my foot fungus, or maybe it was sooner that than that 
but I think two or three months ago is when my foot fungus left and it has not come back at all. I don't think it will ever come back. I don't think it will ever come back because I love iodine and boron so much unless someone like tackles me and takes away my borax, which they don't sell in some countries, but, and takes away my boron supplements or replaces them with some of them and then like iodine. Um, if I haven't, uh, if I haven't accumulated enough iodine in my beautiful soil that I'm going to create, then I would be very sad. I love my iodine and my boron. If I, if I had only two supplements that I could choose from at this time in my location, it would be iodine and boron. If I lived next to a boron mine, I wouldn't care about having the supplement. I can just go to the boron mine and get it myself. And I don't live next to the sea. So I can't process my own iodine, which you could do. You learn how. I guess they like burn it and then they take the ash and they blah, 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 blah. And we probably will go through that on my channel at some point because I just, I'm interested. I'm a geeky kind of person like that. I am interested in weird stuff and learning how things work. But anyway, so I wanted to tell you those things that have healed. So um, for a short time, so the pain, the weird growth underneath my rib cage, that lasted for seven years or so. And then it started hurting more recently. It started hurting, not like super painful, but like, oh, like it was hurting. And then after it hurt for about a week, it completely stopped doing that. It's completely gone. I can completely do everything with my right side uh, that I've done before. Completely gone. Now, on the right side, there's one other thing on my right side that I forgot to tell you. My back on my right side was more, felt more, like the best way I can describe it was more dense it felt more dense and it felt like bigger, but not, it, you couldn't see it. You couldn't see it, but like, I mean, if I'm bending over and I just couldn't bend with that side very easily and, or like sit up, do a sit up in a bed, I couldn't do it on that side. I would not be able, it would be painful to go like this on that side of the bed. I can, I could bend over like that, but like, to get up in a sit up position. No, I'd have to use my left side to do it because my right side was was uh, experiencing what it was experiencing. Uh, so connective tissue. So connective tissue, um, joints, oh, iodine and boron, I mean, for all things really. Okay, is there anything else I wanted to tell you about that? The connective tissue, the healing that I had there. I think that's it. All right. God bless you. Um, yeah, my my videos are going to be, there's going to be a lot of uh, animals in my videos in the future, God willing, and uh, a lot of healing. <laughs> I, I have, uh, I, I say that I'm educated, possibly delusional, that I will help animals using alternative methods because... Um, because I can't sequester humans and just make them my, making them my subjects. I mean, these are educatedly done things, but, um, but yeah, I, w I really want to, in the future, my hope, and maybe it's a delusion, but to cure some said to be uncurable things. And that's what I would like to do because I feel like that's what happened with my daughter with leukodystrophy and they would say, oh, she didn't have leukodystrophy because she healed. Well, okay. I mean, a lot of these leukodystrophy kids have all sorts of gut issues, sleep issues, digestion issues, uh, bone issues, osteopenia, high, high cholesterol, some of these guys, um, revert, like they don't even check their thyroids. Um, the, their reverse T3 is probably very high in these children and they're not checking their thyroids. And if they did check their thyroids, they'd check like two kinds of thyroid hormones and they wouldn't even check any of the other ones because they're conventional and they haven't done it and they just 
I don't know. I hope that, the, that it changes, and I hope that I can make a difference, but we'll see what happens. God willing, in Jesus' name, I, I pray that God bless me. God bless me and bless these people in front of me. All right, see you next time.